Hey there, Daniel Borg here from Cyborg. I've got the absolute pleasure of talking to Craig McGregor from Hunter Recruitment Group. We've been collaborating together for over 10 years. I've helped Craig with his branding, his digital marketing, and just he's just a great mate. We've, we've spent a lot of time together, so it's my pleasure to have a chat with Craig, mate. Hey, Craig, how are you? How are you, mate? Yeah, good. It's payback. I've had you on my podcast <laughs> twice, so had to come onto your podcast. Yeah, this is awesome, mate. I'm so stoked to be able to do this and to have you as my first official guest because um, we are, have got a really good relationship together and I've really enjoyed my time with you. So it's fantastic to be able to get you on board first up. Cool. Honoured to be number one. And um, so how are you finding, mate, the COVID crisis that's going the pandemic? Um, uh, how are you adapting to the situation? Oh, you can see I'm I'm working from home. Um, it has been pretty tough on our business. Uh, we're in recruitment and um, literally all the work that we were working on slowed quite considerably um, about a week or so back and all the temps that we had out in the field were slowly brought back in. So it's definitely impacted us um, and our people. So I literally, I've been on email and phone calls today to talk to our staff that have been out in the field to see if we can't support them with the new government uh, job keeper um, subsidies. So uh, it's just about learning I suppose with the times um, yeah. and figuring out how we can assist the people that work for us but also um, self-reflecting. Um, I've done a lot of self-reflecting over the last week or so around some of the things that we've done over the past 12, 14 years um, and going you know what I think I need to um, congratulate myself on that sort of stuff yeah. but also yeah. then figure out how I move forward uh, in terms yeah. of our business. And, and we've had uh, a conversation, I think, on, on a, a Monday, a week or so back, I had a really bad day having to ring a number of temps to say, hey, the temp assignment's been pulled or your permanent job that we were about to place you in has been pulled. Um, and I rang you on the Tuesday and said, when, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. So yeah. I've been having a chat to you about a, a bit of an online uh, business idea that we've had for yeah. a number of years and haven't had time to really explore it. and I think we're going to have time to explore it. Yeah, this is excellent, and and this is all about a proactive job hunting approach, right? And 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 just just Correct. backtrack a little bit there. Like, it's not only your business; you've got a tribe of um, employees or or contractors that yeah. you manage that you have to help pivot as well, right? So you've got to bring them to, to into the new environment. Um, yeah, hundred yeah. percent. And look, uh, there is one of our businesses is a as a. Um, a warehouse where predominantly it's it's return to work mums or mums that are working at that site. So how they're dealing with um, uh, the changed environment, the loss of income, how we can support them through the job keeper payments. We're working really hard to maximise that for them. Yeah, right, right. And um, so it's been a lot of communication, like you said, just a lot of phone calls and emails and Skype. So it's just been probably two or three weeks for you of of quickly adapting to this new situation. Yeah, a hundred percent. And look, it's yeah. adapting is a great word. Like we've yeah. had a, a couple of clients, for example, where um, we've had a job um, and we've gone great at this current market conditions. We're not going to be able to fill that job how you want it filled now uh, because we're not going to be able to get someone from the industry um, mm. uh, that you're looking for. So let's rejig it. Let's adjust. So we've gone to them and yeah. said, well, great, let's put a, a six month contract in as opposed to a full time role. And then in six months, when the world comes back to normal, the market will have changed and we potentially can get the exact person for you. So it's about, you know, we at Hunter Recruitment Group have always espoused. We have this theory called the job is a box. Um, mm -hmm. What makes up the box to find the perfect person? We think there's a couple of different factors around skills and what I call other stuff, culture, fit, yeah. personality, motivation. Um, in this present time for that customer, we, we wouldn't be able to find the perfect box. So yeah, we've coached yeah. them and, and counseled them around making a slightly different placement um, that will work for them now and then readjusting in six months' time. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Well, it's, it's fascinating, mate. It's so good to be able to see you've been thinking on your feet and, and adapting. And we've even done some social media posts together about yeah, reskilling, retooling. So that's probably helps you get the message out there. I mean, this is so weird. Right now, we're relying on social media to communicate to our audience more than ever. <laughs> like, I never imagined that it would be such a dramatic shift um, to think we're all isolated in our homes, yet we can communicate with the world. And um, it's good to see you doing that as well, taking that approach. I mean, a lot of my clients have been doing that. So um, it's good that they're already geared up for social media so they can leverage it. 
now in, in this yeah. time of need, I suppose. Um, yeah, it's even fun. Like I had uh, a beer on Friday night with my mates. Yeah. We did it via yeah. Zoom. Yeah. So it's yeah, cool. Yeah. yeah that's you just awesome, got to adapt. Man, um, yeah, you do. You do. And um, so we met back in D&I about 10 years ago. And you were saying yeah, to me earlier about how the proactive approach to job hunting is really really the way to go now because there are probably less jobs out there so you need to sort of market yourself as as the role or as a personal brand to fit that role um can you talk a little bit about that for the audience yeah look i think um it's not just now uh we've been career coaching uh for over a decade um one-on-one -on -one, uh, sessions with individuals around um how to transition out of if they've if they've lost their job through redundancy, how to transition to a new role. And we also coach even people that come into our recruitment agency around, well, hey, we're one recruitment agency, but if you want to go and find a role, um, there's two ways of job search. There's proactive job search and reactive job search. Mm. And so what you're we've mentioned there is 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 proactive job search, which I think most people think about either don't have the confidence to do it or um, just want to rely on the the reactive stuff and when i say reactive i mean jumping online going on to seek or indeed yep. seeing a job and reacting to it and going you beauty they're going to give me a call well yeah you're right in the marketplace to come in the marketplace now mm. so if you're one of those people that have lost your job currently and you're applying yep. to work at woolworths for example or coles you're going to be in the competition with potentially five thousand ten thousand people um, yep. How do you make your your application stand out? So mm. when the world comes back to normal, what I, I so I talk to people about the proactive job search for me is around really targeting. Okay, well, let's do the research. This is my skill set, and this is where I want to work. And I want to yep. work in this geographical area. So let's do a search. How many companies are there that I fit? And do I know anyone that works in those companies? Do I have a network that I can tap on the shoulder to try and get an entry into those businesses? And if, if I can, a warm um, referral like a BNI yes. um, would yep. work so much more effectively. Alternatively, do I just knock on their door? Um, I call it old school approach. No yeah, one does it yep. these days, but in the past, that's how we did it. And I I I'll give you, yeah. I was just going to say um, that's something that I'm learning about this situation we're in is we are returning back to more old school values. Like just trust is so much more valuable now. Um, being over leveraged in debt is really hard to deal with. There's so many things that probably our grandparents taught us not to do and to do that we need to refer back to, to help us get through this type of situation. But didn't want to cut you off there. Um, go on. No, I was just going to say, I'm happy to share with you, um, I've told this story a million times, but yep. I, I think it's really powerful the the way that I found my first job post university. And I mm. I jokingly say to people in in 1997 there was a couple of things happen in our region. One, if you're old enough like you and I, you remember that uh, the Knights won. Um, yep. I jokingly tell this story to school kids when I do some career coaching at schools and they look at me like the Knights were good. What are you talking about? So <laughs> the they don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember turning up, to the, uh, turning up to the workers' club that night, at, like in the middle yeah. of the night, and it was just packed full. Of, the streets were packed. Yeah, that was awesome. But yeah, yeah, yeah. the Knights won. Yeah, that was so the Knights won. <laughs> but then, unfortunately, BHP closed, and yeah. what that meant for a bright-eyed, bushy-tailed HR graduate like me was, well, it was bloody hard to get a job. So yeah. I reflect yeah. on that time, and I must have applied for. I reckon close to 200 jobs over the period of months and uh, I didn't even get an interview. And yeah, I look yeah. back at, I was just doing reactive job search. So I started to think outside the square and my brother was playing for the Sydney Kings basketball at the mm -hmm. time. And yeah. uh, the owner at the time, Mike Robleski, who's, who's now passed away, but was a great man. Um, yeah. Scott got me a meeting with him, one of the most powerful business people in Sydney. Uh, yeah, wow. It was fantastic. He introduced me to a number of recruiters in town. Um, couldn't get a role, didn't really want to live in Sydney, had a couple of opportunities, but just passed on that sort of stuff. Uh, I was yeah. playing basketball here locally um, with my uh, now wife, Amy, and uh, we were playing at Gosford, uh, Terrigal okay. Stadium, and, and in the middle of the court was a logo for a, uh, a recruitment agency called Staff Force. And so I went, you know what, I reckon that guy must love basketball if he's sponsoring the stadium. Yeah, yep. So I rang him on the Monday morning and had a great conversation with him. On the Tuesday, I caught the train from Cardiff to, to Gosford and 
had a great interview with him and his wife who owned the business. They got yeah. me back on the Thursday to meet some key staff and I, I started working for them on the Monday. So yeah. the Kept only proactive. way I could get a job was, yeah. was being proactive. Yeah, exactly. So uh, I mean, we've got all the tools at, at hand right now with the internet. Like we can't go and meet people face to face, but we can be sending emails. We could be setting up, like ensuring that our profiles online uh, are sophisticated mm. and, and match our skills. Um, we, we can articulate ourselves in a better way. Um, what are some tips? It could be a really people, good yeah. time. It could be a really good time to research as well. Mm. Like one of the key things that I think most people, what you've just touched on is really critical, but also with the internet today, I didn't have that in 97, yeah. but today you could do a really good, so let's use you as a graphic designer, web designer, um, mm. social brand creator. You could go through and go, okay, I live uh, in Lake Macquarie in that 20 K radius. If I want to commute that far, um, what businesses? Who, who's yeah. there? Who's going to use my skill sets? Who am I excited yeah. about? What industry yeah. sectors do I want to look at? So you could create a spreadsheet of you know, 10, 20, 100 businesses and then go out there on Google, just on yeah. LinkedIn, try and find yeah. key key staff members. Who's the HR department? Who's the, who's the person in charge? Do Who I know that people? person? Yeah. Is there yeah. someone that I can leverage off that might know that person? There's so much stuff you can do um, to yeah. be proactive not only just getting your profile and personal branding ready, but also that that research to go and target mm. those businesses, those industries that you want to, want to work in. Yeah, so you really become a hunter rather than a gatherer. You go out there and be proactive and you... Yep. Yeah. Um, no, that's really awesome advice. And um, I'm sure a lot of people watching this might be in the predicament of losing their job. And, you know, this is what we want to do. We want to be able to help you um, have the tools to get out there and and be proactive about your job hunt because it's just so much more competitive now than it mm. ever has been, I suppose. Yeah, and look, one of the things that, that I've reflected on over the last week or so is I remember my business um, lived through the GFC and uh, yep. one of the things Me that I, I, I wrote a blog article about back then was I, I said that the new currency in the employment market was stability and I can see us mm. returning to something like that. So if you think prior to the GFC, a recruiter like me, I could go and find someone and, and headhunt them into a, into a business because the business was going to pay them 10 grand more a year. Yep. Yep. After the GFC, people were less inclined to jump um, for money. They wanted stability. They were worried yeah. about keeping their job. They were worried about who they were working for. And, and one of the downsides to that I saw in a small blip was small business. Uh, small mm. business was deemed to be a higher risk than big. So yep. I'm hopeful that that's not the same case moving forward that our small business customers and, and the, the engine that drives our economy doesn't get hit by the uh, lack of people wanting to work there. But I, I'm hopeful that due to the higher volume of unemployment that that might not be the case. Yeah, that's a really good point. I mean, you want stability to look after your family and things like that, right? So, so um, just people knowing that they've got that weekly income which is hopefully more than what the government's offering at the moment because that's the whole whole point of this right so yeah. how do you see um businesses i mean have you looked into the government i mean it hasn't even passed legislation yet so who knows if it likes to go in but is there any yeah. thoughts around what the government's offering well i think it's fantastic for um that that hibernation state that uh, scott yeah. morrison was looking for that uh, if you can uh, guarantee someone 750 bucks a week, 1500 bucks mm. a fortnight. Um, that might not be their full wage, but for the majority of people um, in the sort of middle Australia, that's going to be close. And so yeah. I think uh, in this marketplace, they will take that and it, it opens it up for, for people like us at Hunter Recruitment Group and people like yourself. If your business gets impacted, um, that sole trader, um, it really does help them hibernate because my biggest fear was um, businesses would die that you would yep. see businesses not being able to sustain their, their income stream for the next three, six months, whatever this time period is going to be and, and then fall off the, off the um, radar. And that's, that would be sad because there's a lot of great people, but like I just said, it's the engine of Australia. It employs so many people. So if that was to shrink, then unemployment would be even greatly affected. And then the flow on effect for all the other businesses that like through the supply chains of those businesses, Correct. right? That all gets affected. Um, yeah. So it, it is a good initiative. And 
and let's hopefully it'll go through legislation soon and people will start seeing money in the bank, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but the uptick on it could be something like what you've done for the last 14 years, that um, people change, they pivot. Mm, um, yes. Look at the lifestyle and the business that you've created in your home. You're sitting in your home studio. I'm yep. uncomfortably in my bedroom going, I don't really <laughs> like this. Um, are there... Are there, are there businesses out there that'll go, oh, actually, this is fantastic. Yeah, we I can, can do, do this, this from home yeah. full time. Yeah. Um, yeah. These technologies like Zoom and Microsoft Teams, yeah. I, don't need to, I don't need to have an office. Like even you think about us from recruitment, we've pivoted a couple of years ago and we use mm. one-way video interviewing technology and we use Zoom, for example, to um, have interviews face-to-face -face with candidates that are you know, in the Northern Territory or someone mm. who says, look, I work nine to five. Can I jump in and see you during my lunch break? Absolutely. Yeah, um, yeah. So the reality is, is that digital world, will I need an office moving forward as a recruitment company? Probably mm. not. But it's something that uh, other businesses may go, you know what, this is this has worked really well. And I can be like Daniel and set up my uh, my kids in the morning and, and get them <laughs> off to school and then work work when I want to and, and have this yeah. flexibility and this lifestyle that, that us small business owners have known about for a very long time. Yeah, this has been 14 years for me, so I feel like nothing's really changed. I mean, we have to do a bit of homeschooling <laughs> at the moment. But yep. the, the thing that I'm, I don't know if I'm concerned about, but it, the longer this goes on, say we're locked down for six months or we can't do it, like people are just going to uh, eventually get used to it and they're not going to want to go back to normal once. Yeah, that's a really good point. On how, yeah, how long this goes for because we, we can, like that's the difference between humans and animals, right? We can adapt to our environment. We can change and if we're forced to change, we might stay that way and, and then we're right. in a whole new world, right? So Yeah. The, 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 and again, it comes down to that adaptability. I think like you mm. think about someone like me, um, I just love being around people. People yeah, are my energy. Yep. Yep. Um, if, if I'm in the office by myself, I'm not as, not as productive as if I'm in the office with a team. Um, mm. I still remember when I first started my business, I'd, I'd worked for a, a large manufacturing company prior to opening the business. And, and I'd, I think we had 400 people um, at Gosford and uh, mm. about 150 in the office. And being the social person that I am, I, I knew everyone. I'd wander yep. the factory in HR and just have conversations with people for sometimes all day just to mm. feel a pulse of the, the place. And then when I went out on my own and, and sitting in a little office by myself, it was it was a bit, uh, I don't know what the word is, but it was a bit hard. It was hard to yeah, work through. Yeah, yeah. So um, I feel like I've gone back to that. I'm, I'm fortunate I've got the kids uh, bumping in and, and having a chat to me every now and then, or I can yeah. jump in and have lunch with them and do those sorts of things. But yeah. six months time, I can see a lot of people going, get me back in the office. Well, I, I'll tell you one of the weirdest things that happened to me when I first doing this lifestyle is... I actually lost my license, <laughs> so my, my car yeah, license. Right. I think you might remember that. Um, but what I happened? Do, was, yeah. I yeah. I hardly, what happened is I hardly drove. So all of a sudden, I'm always at home, always working from home. And then when I did dro drive, I kind of like, not forgot the rules, but it was when that new 40 kilometre limit came in with school zones and all that. So I just yep. got caught out by silly little things like that, just because I wasn't really used to driving. And, you know, you only have to get three or four of those fines and then you've lost your license. So, so that was like a really dramatic um, change. I had to like adapt because even now I hardly drive. Like I'm lucky to drive once a week so, or going to client meetings. And now with what the situation we're in, I just don't drive at all. Like unless I go down to Coles or Woolies. And um, yeah, so that's a really strange thing. And I mean, the way climate change and all this sort of stuff is going on and impacting our environment. I mean, this might be a reason for people not to drive as much as well. And, you know, yeah, I think of, there's yeah. going to be a lot less uh, CO2 in the air. That's for sure. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, no, it's, um, it's interesting. Lots of changes on the way, but, but back to our BNI, like we met, met at BNI, which was over 10 years ago. And yeah. um, we've been doing stuff together ever since. And that for me was a powerful experience about networking with, with potential clients and, um, and new contacts and, uh, and in many ways, social media has sort of replaced that. I mean, I don't really network anymore, mm. but social media helps me to do the networking, uh, LinkedIn especially. Um, any tips or hints around that with, with job recruiting and, and job hunting? Um, yeah, LinkedIn is, is one of those tools that um, a lot of people come to us and don't know much about. 
in terms yep. of their personal brand. Um, it's critical in terms of, if you think about, yeah, reflect on change. So mm. when I first joined that recruitment company based at, at Gosford um, that I mentioned at the start, uh, I remember we advertised on Tuesdays and Thursdays in the yep. Central Coast Advocate in the paper. That's it. Um, yeah. Then, you know, as, as it evolved, we started to look at online stuff and there was no LinkedIn back then. Um, and we, we moved to a, a, a program where I suppose all well, LinkedIn has taken us to a program where if you think today, um, as soon as you walk out of a recruitment agency's office, or as soon as you walk out of, or before, before you go to the interview, if, if Daniel's about to have an interview with person X for a, for a new graphic designer, you're going to be looking at their LinkedIn profile before they even walk in the door. Yeah. So yeah, yep. they need to make sure that that LinkedIn profile, um, the word that I use is sell. What most people don't yeah. get is that recruitment is a sales process. Yeah. If you don't understand that, you're doing it wrong. And so you need to make sure that your LinkedIn profile sells you effectively um, to the marketplace. It's really, it's a difficult one, I believe, because in a targeted approach, you can actually go after people um, specifically for them. So if I was targeting Daniel and I wanted to work for Cyborg, right. then I'd create a strategy around, you know, what I could do for you and how I can help your business. So that whole sales approach, LinkedIn's a little bit different that you're taking it to the mass market. So you just got to make sure that it covers off on you as a person, as a brand. Mm. Um, one of the quickest and easiest things that I tell people is um, trying to understand the algorithm that is LinkedIn is quite mm. critical. So when, if Daniel was, most people put in, well, the biggest mistake they put in when they're looking for a job is in their uh, title. So it'll say Daniel Borg currently seeking new opportunities. Well, as a recruiter, I have never typed in the words currently seeking new or opportunities. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that title banner is quite heavily weighted in the algorithm that LinkedIn uses. So mm -hmm. for, me, for me, for example, it says recruiter, um, career coach, podcaster, yours would say graphic designer, web designer, social media yeah. marketing, those sorts yeah. of key words. Mm. If you're an engineer, if you're a production worker, if you're an accountant, you need to have those specific keywords in your title. Otherwise, when someone goes searching for you, you'll be missed. Right. Okay. That's a good good point. I think, I think mine doesn't say those words at all. I think it's we help business thrive and grow through, you know, design thinking and that sort of thing. But... Yeah, Which you should move to the body. You should move that yeah. to your body yeah, of your yeah, yeah. your thing and, and make that, yeah. that heading really specific around you and what you do. Okay. Yeah, it cool. will change how people find you. Uh, and one thing I do with LinkedIn, it's obviously writing articles and doing posts that are relevant to my business and industry. And that would help you with a lot of them, wouldn't it? Because you're writing about or using keywords in that writing that help come up, uh, get associated with your personal brand. So you get yeah. come, up, come up in those searches. Yeah, so if you're job searching, so if you're an engineer um, and you're mm. looking for a new role, then you'd go and hunt out uh, industry-specific groups or um, hashtags or businesses or key people and like their posts, comment yeah. on their posts, be seen. Mm. And so then mm. as you, again, it's a it's that layer of the onion as you then mm. approach them and target their business, you will then recognise, correct, trust, yeah. but yeah. also recognition yeah. of, oh, it's, it's as simple as, People ask me, so if I'm going for an interview with Daniel Borg on uh, Tuesday, on Monday or the following, on the Friday before, should I look up Daniel's um, LinkedIn profile? You know, what I say to people is it's not Facebook. It's not, you're not stalking. Because mm. what actually happens is Daniel will get in his notifications, um, six people have viewed his profile. Yeah. One person has viewed his profile. And if he sees that Craig McGregor's viewed his profile and Craig's coming for an interview on the next day, as an individual, you go, oh, wow, Craig's actually interested in me. He's actually doing his research. He really wants this job. So, it's just, again, it's non, it's subliminal. You're not actually yeah. being overt, but it's, mm. it's planting that seed in your brain that Craig is the right person for your business. That's right. That's also, mm. I was going to say, it's also critical yeah. to learn more about Daniel before you go for the interview. Definitely. Um, I've got this saying, content marketing speeds trust, and there's mm. this uh, great book by... Um, uh, Stephen Covey, uh, The Speed of Trust. And that's all about how the, the more you can build trust with people, the more you can convert faster and things can happen faster. So for me, content marketing is that. You can 
get your message out to the world in little incremental steps to show what you do, you do what you say you can do, and slowly but surely you're building trust with people so that when they see an opportunity that they might need your help with, they're more willing to think of you and trust you because they've seen the, the, the long tail of events that you've put out there of what you're doing. So they, it's like following a trail to your door, I suppose. Um, yeah, hundred yeah, percent. You, yeah, you've done some yeah. really great blog articles about that in the past. So yep. um, powerful stuff. Yeah, no, it's, it's really cool. Well, you know, we've, I think we've talked for a while now. Um, yeah, <laughs> we could talk really, forever, you and me. Yeah, we could talk. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so Craig and I are actually working on a project together where we're, we're going to help uh, people be more proactive with their job job search. So they'll be more like watch this space, I suppose. Um, yeah, absolutely. But, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's been an honour uh, collaborating with you for over 10 years, Craig. And thanks for um, being my first guest on Untethered. That's what I'm going to call who would it. Have, who would have thought, hey, lining up for bacon and eggs at a <laughs> business meeting 14 years down the track, We'd yeah, be on right. Zoom together having yeah, a chat. Yeah. <laughs> Who'd have yeah, thought, that's, eh? Yeah, it's awesome, mate. Um, you know, we've done a few podcasts together, and I, I helped you with your podcast, and yeah, and still do. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah, it's it's awesome to see um, you helping me with mine, and like I don't know, I've I've always, I've had it in my back of mind to do this, but I guess it's taken this situation to 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 go forth, and I can't. I'm trying to like kill a few birds with one stone, I suppose, like. So, um, so I mean, it give, gets me to have these conversations with clients, um, to touch base with them and just reconnect because we can't do it at the moment physically. So, so it's really just using that opportunity and then um, expanding it into into social media and video and podcast and stuff yeah, like that. Mate, so, you're, yeah, you're yeah. built for podcasting. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like same same as me. I had a. Yeah a life change there about two years ago and went, I need to do something. And the podcast was this outlet for me that mm. I just still love. I love, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I lo I, I'm going to miss it. I'm going to have to look at uh, pivoting like you're doing on mm. zoom or, or some other technology, but yeah. I have two microphones and I love nothing more than sitting in a room with someone and just talking to them about, tell me, how did you get to where you are? Yeah, yeah, Why did yeah, you do yeah. that? It's just so engaging and so much fun. And on that note, Craig has got a podcast. It's called Career Conversations. It's on iTunes and yeah, Spotify. Spotify. It's on uh, yep. cloud, um, SoundCloud. SoundCloud. Yeah, yeah. So um, get on it because he, he interviews a lot of Newcastle entrepreneurs, a lot of Maitland entrepreneurs, uh, business owners, just about their journeys. And there's a lot of golden nuggets in those podcasts that will help you understand your own career journey, right? And, and put it into context of what you can do as the next path of your journey and how to pivot and how to move and how to be proactive in your job hunt approach. So check it out. Uh, it's called career conversations on iTunes, on SoundCloud and Spotify. Uh, yeah, well, you can you just go to our website, which Cyborg yes. created, which is hrgroup.com.au forward slash podcast. Exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Craig, thanks so much for your time. And um, no doubt we'll be speaking again soon. Cheers, mate. I'll zoom you later. Thanks mate. Cheers. Bye-bye. Did you press stop on the record?